Which printer should you buy in 2025? The Bamboo Lab P1S or the Elegoo Centauri Carbon? To answer that question, we need to test the print quality, compare the specs, and summarize the benefits and drawbacks of both printers. Look, I'm fully aware there are plenty of reviews out there for the Centauri Carbon, so I'm going to do mine a little different. I'm going to focus on the specs that I think matter and try to review this printer in a really condensed way. Now, before we get started, I want to say that Elegoo offered to send me this printer to review, but they are not approving this video before I post it. And I will definitely include things about the Centauri Carbon that Elegoo should update to make it an even better product. Now, the P1S I'll be using, I paid for with my own money, and I believe I bought it on sale for around $5.99. You can buy a new P1S for $549 today, and a Centauri Carbon goes for $299. Keep in mind that I did upgrade the nozzle and the extruder gears of all my P1Ss, and that cost me an additional $100 to $150 per printer. Right off the bat, Elegoo has made a very strong value proposition at this price point. The question is, will your money be better spent on the budget newcomer or the more expensive but more proven veteran? Well, that's the question I'm going to answer in this video. So let's jump right into the print quality comparisons. All right, guys, before we look at the physical models, I wanna show you the spreadsheet that I made for reference. So throughout the video, if you want to know what presets I used, uh, what filament I used, how long it took, you can refer to this spreadsheet and it'll tell you everything you need to know. I made this in the interest of saving time and keeping this video as short as possible. So here's the models that I printed, filaments that I used. Any repeated filament is the same spool. So this spool of green PLA was moved back and forth between printers and so was all of the other spools. The plus signs in the presets means that I added these settings or changed these settings. And I typically did that to match presets across the different slicers. And then I also dried all of the spools that require drying. I do think the nylon, however, could have been dried for a little bit longer. And I think both printers would have performed better if I had dried it a little longer. All right, let's take a look at the prints now. Up first, we have the Benchy from the Centauri Carbon. This Benchy looked really good. The only problem was the overhang performance on the hull of the Benchy. Not quite what I'd expect from a top tier printer. Then for the P1S, you can see the hull of the Benchy looks much better. The overhangs are better on this Benchy, but there is slightly more stringing, which I found kind of interesting. Then we have the torture toaster from the Centauri Carbon. The toes is not connected all, all the way through, so the lever doesn't even pick them up. Uh, the keys were falling out because the tolerances were really good, so there is that. And just overall, the, the overhang performance with this filament just was not that good. The exterior does look pretty nice, though. Then the P1S, you can see the exterior is even nicer. The Toast also has some jamming issues in there, and you can see that major flaw right there. And then the tolerance keys weren't quite as good as the Centauri Carbon, but I do think the overhang performance was slightly better. Then we have the TPU ball holster that I designed. The Centauri Carbon printed these beautifully. As you can see on the top surface, there's a little bit of under extrusion, but overall these TPU prints look almost identical. So as you can see, this is the P1S print and you can tell the difference by the top surface there. There's a slight bit of over extrusion compared to the under extrusion on the Centauri Carbon. Overall, both these printers print TPU amazingly. Before we continue with the video, I want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, PCBWay. While PCBWay is known for its PCB prototyping and assembly, they also offer tons of other manufacturing services. If you're like me and you love designing 3D printed parts, but don't have the capacity to run a giant print farm, PCBWay could be the manufacturing partner that you're looking for. They offer a comprehensive 3D printing service that includes FDM, SLA, SLS, and even metal 3D printing. Recently, I've been relying heavily on PCBWay for my CNC prototyping as well, 
and I finally have some parts to show you guys. I was working on updating one of my fidget slider designs so that I no longer have to use glue to assemble them. And I ordered these parts in brass with a smooth machining finish and they showed up looking gorgeous. Ordering parts on PCBUA is also really easy and there are a ton of options to choose from. You can pick from tons of different materials for your CNC machine parts, such as 6061 aluminum, brass, copper, stainless steel, and even titanium. You can really tailor your order exactly how you need from defining tight tolerances, threaded features, to part marking with laser engraving. There are a ton of options for manufacturing services nowadays, but not many can compete with the turnaround times and the quality that PCBUA promises. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, we'll take a look at the carbon fiber filled prints that shouldn't be printed on a stock P1S, at least according to Bamboo. To print these kinds of filaments, you should definitely upgrade your P1S's hot end and the extruder gears, which you can do for less than 100 bucks. For mine, I went with the High Flow E3D Obsidian Hot End and a hardened extruder gear kit from Amazon. I'm not sponsored by either company, but I will leave the links in the description below. This is the PETG carbon fiber printed off the Elego Centauri Carbon. This is the Tesla lock that I designed, and man, does this thing look absolutely gorgeous. It came out perfect. It's flawless. There's really nothing wrong with this print. I think it's probably one of the best Tesla charging adapters that I've ever printed. It's that good. And the P1S is a completely different story. I don't know what happened with the P1S, but there must have been some like some oozing uh, on the nozzle or something, and it was just dragging the PEGI around, and it caused those artifacts. And I would say between the Centauri Carbon and the P1S, the Centauri Carbon absolutely blew the P1S out of the water with this one. Then we have the same filament, but I printed out this little print and place ratchet and the Centauri Carbon performed really, really well. Uh, between these two printers, it's really hard to tell the difference. And then this one with the P1S, see, like I said, really hard to tell the difference. You can spot it if you look at the under and over extrusions on the top surface. That's really the only way to tell. And then here we have nylon carbon fiber. And this one's kind of interesting because I actually think the P1S outperformed the Centauri carbon, which I wasn't really expecting. So here's the P1S's print. I think it came out cleaner. Uh, the arrows look a little bit better. There's way less stringing. So yeah, I think the P1S won this one. All right, guys, now that we've looked at the prints, I want to quickly review the chart that I've made for ranking these printers. So I have the specs listed here, the points for each spec, and then the printers. I have it color coded so you guys can see, hopefully just at a glance, what printer is winning what specification. I ended up with the P1S winning by one point, okay? And it's because I weighed certain specifications with more value than others, and so I ended up with the P1S winning in my mind. Now, I do want to say that depending on who you are, the Centauri Carbon could definitely be the better printer. If you're a beginner and you don't have any other printers, if you're just getting started in this hobby, I would actually recommend getting the Centauri Carbon. It's super cheap, it has awesome specifications. It's a great starter printer. That's truly how I feel. That being said, if you're kind of a veteran in the space, if you have a print farm, if you own or if you own or want to own more than one printer, like let's say you want to start a business, I would lean more towards the P1S because you have that upgrade path, you have other printers that will work with the same softwares, that'll have very similar interfaces. Um, so that's why I think the P1S would win in my mind. And I also own four P1Ss, okay? So you guys might think I'm a little biased. I really do love these printers. And there are certain things that I really don't like about them. So it's really, really a tight race. Now, Elegoo, these are the things you need to fix, okay? Obviously everything in red, you should fix. Minus like, you know, weigh it based off of the point ranking that I gave it. 
but let's go let's go line by line. Chamber lighting is useless. The the chamber light literally illuminates itself and nothing else. At least with the variation that I got. I've heard that they have since updated it, but I don't know. They sent me the one with the bad chamber lighting. So you need to fix that. Uh, the camera is useless because the chamber lighting is so bad. Okay. I think it actually has a higher frame rate than the, than the P1S's, but in terms of resolution, I think they're the same. It's really tough to tell because I can't see anything with the poor chamber lighting. The runout sensor. Move the runout sensor to the head of the printer, like all the bamboo printers, and I will be very, very happy. Having it side loaded doesn't seem like a big deal, but it just makes it more complicated if you want to run like a custom uh, filament feeder or dry box feeder combo. It just makes it more difficult. And then the last thing that I think you could upgrade is the noise level. The fans are really loud. They're unnecessarily loud. Uh, it's It might even be possible to just swap them out with some uh, like Noctua fans. And maybe that would just fix the issue. I don't think it's the hardware. I don't think it's the mechanics. I don't think it's the gantry. I think it's just the fans and they are very loud. All right, guys, this is what it sounds like when the Centauri Carbon is printing. Definitely not the quietest printer. All right, now this is the sound of a P1S printing. Definitely a much quieter printer. It is printing carbon fiber nylon, so it's going a bit slower than it would be if it was printing PLA, but you guys get the point. So, Elegoo, fix these categories, these red categories, and your printer will absolutely blow the P1S out of the water. Also, I do want to quickly mention, I used the Elegoo slicer for all of these prints because it's basically the same thing as Bamboo Studio and I didn't feel like using Orca Slicer. When I tried to use Orca Slicer with the printer, I was noticing it had really, really long startup sequences. I don't know what was causing it, um, but I eventually just switched over to the Elegoo Slicer and it works great. So there you go, guys. That's my review. The P1S wins by one point. I'm definitely impressed with the Centauri Carbon, as I think most people are, especially at this price. I still remember paying close to one grand for my Prusa MK3S Plus years ago. Look at us now. $300 gets you an enclosed Core XY printer with a touchscreen that spits out awesome prints. It is truly the perfect time to get into the printing hobby or to start a business in your garage or bedroom like I did. We just hit 2,000 subscribers on YouTube, and I'm so thankful to all of you who have supported me throughout my short journey thus far. Now, to give back to you guys, I'm going to be giving away my Centauri Carbon. I want to set a subscriber goal, maybe 2,500 subs. Yeah, at 2,500 subs, I'm going to give away my Centauri Carbon. If you want a chance to win, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you've learned something new, please comment down below what you learned. Also, I'd love it if you subscribed and hit the bell notification icon so you know when my next video drops. Don't forget, if you subscribe, like, and comment on this video, you have a chance to win a free printer. All right, this has been Sam with Muxo Makes. Thank you so much for watching.